express all my gratitude. I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I've got worries, I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but nothing else fit for a king except for.
right. Good morning. Good morning. It's amazing to have you join us this morning as we get to have our journey ICC gathering online. Um, and as we begin this new year, we're so happy that you got to join us today. Um, and as we start off, I'll start off with our psalm. It says that, Lord, I will sing about your faithful love for me. My song of praise will have your justice as its theme. And that's what we are excited about this year. That even as we begin this year, that we will have a song of praise. That we will sing about God's faithful love through 2023 and currently 2024. So I invite us to a few seconds of looking to the new year. What's one thing that you are looking forward to this year? And just think about it for one second. Father, we bring these thoughts and desires that we have for this new year. We thank you that you have been faithful and have carried us through the past, through 2023. And we pray that this one thing that we are looking forward to, that you will carry us through and will help us through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, um, thank you for joining us. And yeah, as you're seated in the room, uh, watching on your phone, watching on your laptop, if you have anyone around, you can just high-five them as we get to continue our time together. Good morning, church. Such a delight to join with you today in your homes. Create some space to dance for the Lord. So I'm to say that every praise is to our God. Every word of worship belongs to Him alone. So we are grateful. Feel free to join us and dance along. Here we go. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, we find our call. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Let's hear again. Say every, every praise is to our God.
to the setting sun. Love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we'll carry on. Love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Father, I've known you as a friend. 
So as we get to have our time of prayer, um, yeah, what are, I invite us to have a few minutes. What are some of the things that we are trusting God for? What are some of the things that we are grateful for? And we can bring them in prayer. So, Father, we bring our prayers, our joys, our celebrations, our thanksgiving for how far you have carried us, and even our hopes and dreams for this new year and all that it holds. We pray that we would be more aware of your presence, more aware of your love for us, and also your strength in the times that we will rely on on your strength. We thank you for the family and the friends and the holidays that we've had and we, we know that they have become an, a beautiful time of connection with friends and of family. We thank you that we have gotten to celebrate your birth last week. And even as we get to celebrate the new year, may this be a wonderful new year filled by moments of you surprising us. And as we close our time together, we I invite us to open our hands and share in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So a few celebrations this far is that we'd like to thank each and every one of you for being part of our community, for being with us through the many months, years, days that you have been part of our community, and we are so grateful. And also, last Sunday and this Sunday have been our two online gatherings, and we get to resume the next next week as a physical gathering at Garden Estate Secondary School from 9.30 a.m., and the second gathering at 11.30 a.m. We are excited and looking forward to have you during that gathering. And yeah, thank you so much. If you'd also like to give, the ways to give will be shown on the screen. And um, we would say baskets are coming around, but that will be next Sunday. So thank you so much for your generosity and giving and being part of our community. Hello and welcome to the final gathering for the year 2023. Can you believe it's already New Year's Eve? We've gone through an entire year. And for that, we have reason to be grateful, to thank God for the blessings that he has poured into our lives and to reflect on his goodness and his faithfulness to us. So this week, as we wrap up the year, as we have the final Sunday, we are continuing on our reflection on the theme of joy. And so... We'll be reflecting on what it looks like for us to have joy in times of transition. What does it look like for us to experience joy even when there are changes in our circumstances, in our experiences, and in the lives that we live? I don't know about you, but for me, when I look back at this year, when I reflect on all that has happened, there have been so many changes. There have been changes in my family, changes in the things that I do at work, changes in key relationships around me, changes that have given me milestones that I want to celebrate, uh, and things that have surprised me and caught me off guard, changes that I didn't expect. And changes and transitions are a part of the human experience. And the question is, is it possible for us 
to carry joy in those moments? Is it possible for us to actually experience the gladness of God accompanying us through the changes and the transitions of our lives? For you, when you look back in the year, what do you see as the key changes or, or milestones that have happened? For some of us, it might have been something that brought you a lot of discomfort or something that actually challenged the way that you had experienced life up to that particular point. Whatever the experience that you had, the question that we ask ourselves today is, how does God invite us to move through the changes and the transitions that we go through experiencing joy? Joy and change are not incompatible. Actually, one of the things that I have come to learn and I have come to experience in my own life is that a lot of the changes in my own life are accompanied by both joy and pain. Sometimes when I'm celebrating, it's the same time that I am feeling uh, a sense of loss or a sense of setback. And so in those moments when we reflect and when we find ourselves at those points, the question that we ask ourselves is, Lord, what do you want to show me about the change that I am experiencing that would bring me joy? As we look back on the year, I wonder what feelings come to mind, what experiences come to mind regarding the changes that have happened in your life. For some of us, maybe even looking back, is so foggy, you can't remember particular experiences that you had. Um, or maybe for some of us, there's experiences that defined your year and you can remember exactly what emotions those experiences brought to mind. All this reminds us, all these changes and experiences bring us to the point of remembrance that joy and a change are not incompatible. Actually, they tend to accompany one another in the moments and in the experiences of transition in our lives. A few weeks ago, my sister was getting married and I remember watching her walk down the aisle. And for me, that was a moment of joy. We were celebrating as a family that she was getting married. There was a lot of celebration. But I remember I also caught a glimpse of something in my heart, a sense of loss for I would no longer have my uh, last born sister we, at home anytime I visited my parents. And for me, that challenged my perception of what, where joy comes from, especially in times of transition. It challenged my perspective of, you know what, when I'm celebrating, am I just experiencing joy by itself or is every transition marked by both a sense of loss and a sense of joy. As we come to the end of the year, uh, today is New Year's Eve, and in a couple of hours, we will be saying goodbye to 2023. And we'll be ushering in a new year, 2024, with all the hopes and the dreams that we carry for it. But as a time of transition, it invites us to reflect on the scriptures and to reflect on all that God invites us to to ask ourselves, how does this moment of transition, how does this moment of change, how does this moment of turning uh, from one calendar year to another remind us to reflect on the place of joy in our transitions? And I want to invite us to see three things that uh, we are invited to reflect on as we uh, look at joy in the time of our transitions. The first is this. As we wrap up this year, we are invited to experience the joy of letting go. For some of us, 2023 is a year that we desire to forget. There are things that happened or experiences that we had or circumstances that we found ourselves in that we wish we do not want to look back on that past. And there's a joy in letting go, allowing those things to pass and to be in our past and allowing ourselves to face the future with the confidence and the hopes that God has for us. 
Joy allows us to release the baggage and the burdens and to turn our attention towards the gr being grateful recipients of the blessing that God poured into our lives and of his providence for us throughout the year. And so as you reflect on this year, I invite you to pause and take a couple of moments and allow the joy of release to fill your life and to allow the Spirit of God to pour into your heart the joy of letting go of all that has been in the past of this year. Maybe for some of us, it's good things that happened, and we might want to hold on to those things and to say, you know what, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm ready to let go of those moments, those milestones that I experienced this year. But the thing about what God has for us is that he always points us forward. And so we can release joyfully the things that are in our past, whether good or bad, and we can face the future having experienced the joy of letting go. The second thing, the second way that we are invited to experience joy in times of transition and change is to experience the joy of being accompanied. You see, all of us can look back at the celebration of what it's meant for God to walk with us and to be our present and constant guide throughout the year. God has shepherded us. He's walked with us through moments of challenge, moments that we could not have uh, experienced by ourselves. And he has accompanied us as a steady companion throughout the year. There's a word that is used in scripture a lot. You find it said when people are reflecting and looking back on the things that have happened and the moments that they've had. That word is remember. And when you look at the story of the people and the children of Israel, as they were looking back, you, you experience them reflecting and remembering a lot, of the, a lot of things. But one of the things that they remember most consistently is how God accompanied them throughout their journeys uh, in the desert, throughout their journeys uh, with their enemies, throughout their journeys as a people providing and watching and guiding them through everything that they experienced. In the words of Psalm chapter 16, we are reminded that the psalmist prays and says to God, you make known to me the paths of life. You fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. You see, for the psalmist, the joy of being accompanied and being shown the path of life for him was something to consistently reflect on in the times of transition. And so today, as you look forward to a new year and as you look back on the year that has passed, how has God accompanied you? And how can you celebrate the joy of that in your own life, in your family, in your workplace, in the things that you do consistently? How can that be a marker for you to remind you that, you know what, these things are not common, they're not ordinary, that you have been accompanied by the presence of God throughout your life. And then the third way that we can reflect on joy in times of change is joy in the promises of God. You see, this past week we celebrated Christmas, the arrival of the promised King and Savior of the world. And in a world that quickly wants to move on to the next celebration, the next high, as followers of Christ, we're invited to take some few moments to pause in that promise of God and to anchor our joy on that. Because the message of the arrival of the king was good news of great joy, as the angels declared to the shepherds on that day when Christ was born. That message was that we can become a people who are anchored in joy regardless of the changes in our circumstances, in our feelings, in even the choices that we make. We can become a people who are anchored in a story about a new kingdom that has been ushered into our lives. 
the message of Christmas and the message that God invites us to carry into every season that we find ourselves in and the message that we're invited to carry even into the new year 2024 is this, that God has invited all of us to participate in a story that he is telling through our own lives and to carry that joy wherever we find ourselves in. In Isaiah 51 verse 11, Isaiah talks about a promise of a kingdom that God was going to bring into the world. And he said in that kingdom, there would be everlasting joy that would crown the people's head. That there would be gladness and joy that would overtake them. And that sorrow and sighing would flee and would depart from the lives of the people. So whatever kind of year you've had this year, whatever experiences you've gone through, whatever mountains and valleys you found yourself, whether you found yourself at dead ends or you found yourself at crossroads, uh, forks in the road, having to make difficult decisions, the message is this, that we can carry the joy of God's promise wherever we find ourselves. And that joy is anchored in the story of the promised King Jesus who steps into our lives and becomes the one who guides, accompanies us, and becomes the one who helps us to live lives that are open, released before him in surrender so that he can guide us into his plans and his purposes. So as you look into 2024, and the plans and the purposes that you have, would you maintain a posture of joy before the Lord? Would you say to him, Heavenly Father, I don't know what you're holding before my life this coming year, but I let go of the past, I let go of all that has been behind me. I hold on to your presence that has accompanied me, and I look forward to your promises that are good and that will lead me into the plans that bring me into the fullness of life that you have for me. So beloved friends, I pray that God leads you in his goodness. I pray that you would lay down every baggage, every burden that you have carried this year, and that you would experience God's joy in freedom, having released you from that. I pray that you would reflect on his goodness, that you would see his faithfulness, how he has steadily been the one at your side, shepherding you. And I hope that you would continue to hold on to his promises for you in this new year that is coming up. So let's pray together as we wrap up our time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the year that has been we thank you so much because you have walked with us. Lord, you have been our steady companion. The many times that we did not know where to go, you guided us. You showed us your ways. And Lord, when we fell down, you picked us back up again. And you continued on the journey with us. Lord, we praise you and we exalt you because you are the one who gives us the promise that anchors our joy. We thank you for the gift of Christ coming in human flesh and becoming the embodiment of all that we desire to experience in our lives. And so as we look into the future, we hold on to your promises for us. Lord, you say to us, that when we look into the, our futures, that you have already gone ahead of us and you are ordering our steps, that your plans and your purposes for us are good and we can trust you, we can steady our lives on you, knowing that you will hold our hands and walk with us. And so we thank you for that. And now on this New Year's Eve, we pray for all that is behind us, for all that is ahead of us, and for this present moment, that you would be the one we put our dependence on, 
that we would continue to abide in you and to study our lives in all that you have for us. We pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we wrap up our time together, I invite us to share in communion one more time before we close the year. You see, Jesus, at his moment of greatest transition, took the bread and the cup, and he offered these symbolic elements to his disciples and said to them, take this bread, take this cup, and eat in remembrance of me, in remembrance of the one who had given them a new story that they were going to live in, in, the one, in remembrance of the one who had anchored their joy permanently, not in their circumstances or in their feelings, not in their doubts or in their fear, but in the one person who would continue to be with them through it all. And so he took the bread and the cup and he offered these elements to them. And so wherever you are, I invite you to get a piece of bread, um, to grab a cup of water uh, or some tea or some juice and to take these elements and place them before you. And then I invite us to make a prayer of surrender before God. Would you position your heart before him and would you ask him as you take the bread and the cup that these symbols, these elements would become a marker for you, a marker for the things that you desire to allow God to release from your life, to become a marker of the things and the hopes and the desires that you carry into the future. And once you've done that, once you've made that prayer, I invite us to take the bread and the cup together. Jesus, on the final night, took the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this and eat in remembrance of me. So would you take your bread and would you eat with me? In the same way, he took the cup, gave it, and said to them, this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Would you take the cup and drink? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you who are crucified, died and rose on our behalf, give to us this symbol as a remembrance of you in exchange for the gift that you gave to us. You gave us your life in exchange for ours. And so, Lord, now, on this day, as we turn over a new leaf into the new year, we give you our lives and all that they have been in the past, and we embrace the life that you give to us and all the hopes and dreams that it carries for our future. We pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved friends, may you have a wonderful New Year's Eve. Whatever celebrations you have planned, may they be fruitful, wonderful, and joyful.